Hey, it's Micare. I thought we could have a quick chat about organizing our seed packets. So if you caught my video the other day about knowing which seeds you need to order, you might have seeds on the way. If you didn't catch that video, I'm gonna put it up at the end for you, okay? But you might have seeds on the way and they might be your first seed packets that weren't just, you know, a little handful of packs. So I thought we could explore some ideas about how to organize seeds. Different people use different methods. One method that's really popular right now is um, these photo storage organization boxes. So it's a big plastic box that has smaller plastic boxes inside that happen to be about seed packet sized. A lot of people like those. Um, that idea gives me anxiety for some reason. I think it's that like, if it's not in this little box, then I have to go get this little box and then I have to go get this little box. And it just seems like a lot for me. That idea might work awesome for you. It works awesome for a lot of people, not me. So this is my system and it might look like chaos, but I promise you that it's not. I keep my seeds grouped by what they are like are they herbs are they flowers if they're flowers are they pollinator flowers are they medicinal flowers or are they just pretty um so you can see that here medicinal plants compost plants like um comfrey and other chop and drops Pioneer species, which would also be comfrey, but mullein as well. And I've got my pollinators and my ornamentals, my herbs. And then alliums are your, um, like your onions and shallots and things like that. And I've used painter's tape to label. That way, if I want to switch, it comes off easily. It's pretty cheap. This is the wider roll and I just split it down the middle with an X-Acto knife and that gives me twice as much. For a little while, I tried organizing my seeds by season. The problem with that is that in North Texas, we don't have seasons as you might know them. We have summer, which starts in like March and goes through it's 80 right now, and today is December 9th. So it goes, it's summer until a mini winter, and then we'll have a mini winter for a few days, and then it might be autumn type spring until the next mini winter. So my original thought was, okay, well, everything that needs to be planted in early spring, I'll put together, but those same things get planted until it gets hot and then we can start succession sowing them again in September and plant them until it freezes. So that didn't work for me. But if you are in a climate with defined seasons, that might be a really good plan for you. Have, you know, the things that you need to start sowing the seeds in January, February in one group and then the next and then the next. And that way you can just pull out your seasonal seeds um, unfortunately, if you're in a chaotic climate, which I guess more of the world is coming into chaotic climates, but if you're in one, that might not work. I tried it. I tried it earnestly. It just wasn't for me. So I went to this system and then I outgrew that container. So I added a box and all I did was just make some little tape dividers down in here if you can see that one right there but I just put tape in there as like a barrier and then this box is um, tomatoes peppers eggplants um, okra roselle those types of things these are my brassicas like broccoli cauliflower um, collards these are my cucurbits, all of the um, melons and cucumbers and loofahs and all those good things. And then my roots, my carrots, my beets, turnips. I have other roots that I can't think of at the moment. And then my greens, um, 
lettuces, some of my greens, it's in quote because like red mustard is a green, but it's red. So those sorts of things, um, amaranth, and then I have my nitrogen fixtures that I didn't really know where else to put them, um, peas and, and moringa and whatnot. So all of that is pretty simple. <clears throat> and then the other thing that I do to help me stay organized, and this is a recent addition um, in the last six months, is I have my catch-all box. And so this was when I started my brassica seeds. I put them in here with a clothespin so that if anything, any of the seeds that I started on that tray didn't come up, they were already grouped. So I have groups from different seed startings. And then anytime I like come out and spot sow some beets, I put those sorts of things back in this box so I don't have to sort through everything if I need to replant and so that they're not everywhere. So I already went through this morning and refiled some of those into my main boxes. And I'll do that over the coming weeks because I need to get all of these back into my main boxes so that I know exactly what I have. So the real idea between or behind seed organization is just putting them in a system where you can find what you need when you need it. If that is seasonal where you are, if that means that you alphabetize all of your seeds because you have that librarian brain and I worked in a bookstore for over a year. I've got that alphabet alpha alphabetization brain going most of the time. Um, fun fact, I can sing my alphabet backwards. If I get 15 likes on this video, I'll do a short singing my alphabet backwards for you. How's that? <laughs> and I will be horribly embarrassed and probably have to wear my hat in front of my face. But yeah. So weird stuff. Um, find a system that makes sense for you. Be willing to change your system. Just because you put an organizational system in place does not mean that it has to stay. If it's not working for you, change it. My seasonal system did not work. I had to go by to grouping by type. So find something that works for you and do it. I will put that how to know what to order video up here and Go ahead and hit the notification bell because next week I'm going to do garden planning and the week after that we're going to talk about scheduling for starting your seeds. Alrighty? Later y'all. Bye bye!